wasn't a very good card at the end, was it? Um, we're here to have a little look at a, a modern mandolin banjo. A few years ago, I would never have thought anyone would still be making mandolin banjos, but here they are. I don't know where this came from. It has the look of a sort of East European instrument, or possibly, possibly the uh, Brazilian continent, possibly also uh, sort of the Caribbean. They use mandolin banjos, not necessarily tuned as mandolin banjos in that area. And in Brazil, they have what they call a cavaquino banjo, sometimes strung with four strings, sometimes strung with eight, but tuned more like a ukulele than a, a mandolin. Just let's get down to cases here, compare it to what mandolin banjos used to be like. As you see, it's very new and very snazzy. It's got a nice finish on it. It's got a nice embossed uh, little logo on there, which I think says APC, yes. And uh, half a guitar or ukulele there. And uh, it's very nicely finished. Indeterminate wood. I don't know what the wood is. Uh, it looks to have what looks like a very sharp heel on it but in actual fact it's not bad it's quite comfortable and uh, it's quite attractive I'm doing the best I can in this faltering light and there's the back so it's all very nicely finished it's got what we used to call a zither banjo type construction to hold the head on there with a on a metal tone ring. As you say, it's quite attractive. Got a nice flange there. And it's got a simple but efficient tailpiece. Now, the thing that's odd about this is that um, it, there's a big action there between the actual body, but it's, it's got a sort of, like a floating fingerboard there, if you like. And it had the original bridge that it had on was very high and it had a very high action, which added to the fact that um, when tuned up to mandolin pitch, I could barely get it up to mandolin pitch, it was so taut. I was frightened of it actually bending the neck. So I've tuned this a tone lower and I measured the, the scale length and it is a bit longer than the average mandolin banjo, it's 14 and a quarter inches. So, um, yeah, it's, you'd need very sort of light strings for this to tune up the mandolin pitch comfortably. Um, and I've got this advertised in the ukulele um, section as well as the mandolin section for the simple reason that a lot of ukulele players now are people who want ukulele banjos. Uh, I found that mandolin banjos make very good ukulele banjos because of the small size of the vellum. Makes them very bright. And uh, of course they normally don't have steel strings on. They would normally put nylon strings on. So I suppose if you doubled up the nylon strings on an instrument like this, it'd be more like a tarot patch banjo. I've done that in the past. Seems to work quite well. Uh, one thing I haven't said about this so far, and that is it's in an absolutely superb gig bag. Uh, a bit like a pod case, but um, full shape of the instrument with bags of foam packing in there, double skinned. Uh, the, the gig bag itself <laughs> has got to be worth a, uh, a lump of money. So anyway... Uh, I'll do my best to try and show something, a, a, a bigger range of this and also the playability of the neck to finish off with. And uh, if you fancy giving it a punt, I would really appreciate it. And uh, because I am knee deep in ukulele banjos, mandolin banjos, I don't know why I ever bought another one, but there you are. It's the loving of the game, as the song says. 
This my little favourite tune that I always play on mandolin banjo is a little bit of ragtime by Coley Jones and his Dallas string band and of course it's the Dallas rag which is in the odd key of F on a regular mandolin so I suppose this tune down a tone it's coming out about E flat just in case you wanted to check up the facts thanks for looking have a good day here we go wrong. I'll try that again. I <laughs> missed it. <laughs> Forget it. I'm too old for this. Thanks for looking. Bye now.